great for British bike fans to see him here this week. Liquid Gas Cannondale make their Tour of Britain debut, led by double Giro d'Italia winner Ivan Basso, in what could be one of the strongest squads in the race. Basso took fifth at the Giro in May and then helped Vincenzo Nibali to third overall at the Tour de France. And the new Aussie outfit, Orica Green Edge, is here, but with just five riders, including Olympic silver medalist Jack Bobridge, the world individual pursuit record holder, and a key member of the team pursuit who pushed GB in the London Velodrome. We're starting with one down already, you know, we've had a, we've had a sickness, so uh, I'll just get out there and, and, and just find my legs, I think. A uh, few of the boys as well over the next few days and, and see where we go. We've got some good sprinters with Adis and Howard here as well, though, but, um, you know, we'll try to get them up at the finish, but if not, we'll just uh, ride ourselves in the first few days, I think. Well, what a lineup! And Matt, when you see the crowds flocking around the team buses here at the start, Team Sky, six deep, ten deep, with people desperate to catch a glimpse of their heroes, gives you an indication of how far the sport has moved on. It certainly does. I mean, I was here at Course Weight this morning, two and a half hours before the start, and uh, there's already people here, you know, before we arrived. It's absolutely tremendous. There's a, a real, real buzz about the place, and I'm sure we're going to see the same in every single town and city throughout the tour. Let's be honest, we all know who they've come to see this morning. Of course. Yep, yeah, Mark Cavendish, current world champion, and of course, Wigo himself. Bradley Wiggins, the first winner, British winner of the Tour de France. Yeah, what, what an amazing situation to have that those two guys on British roads racing their home tour. And of course the Olympics has played a big part in that as well. Wiggins winning that, that time trial down at Hampton Court. Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, the crowds, I was there at Hampton Court to, to see Bradley win and it was it was almost to the point of being overwhelming uh, to see the reception that the British crowds gave the Olympics. And I'm sure it's going to be replicated on the roads this week. Now, let's be honest, it's not a tour for Bradley Wiggins and Carfilly probably means it's maybe not a tour for, for Mark Cavendish. Who particularly are you looking out for? My favourite is going to be John Tin and Locke. Uh, of Endura. He's had a tremendous start to the year, then he was a little bit sick, but he's had a good rest and I think he's got all the kind of the right attributes to win a race like this, especially given the crucial stage in Devon with the climbs, he's from that kind of area and of course twice up Kifili Mountain and he displayed his prowess last year uh, by, by winning the King of the Mountains. I think he's going to be a firm favourite for me, but obviously there's, you know, the field is extremely deep in talent this year. It is indeed. 17 teams, 21 different countries represented and the likes of Sammy Sanchez, Ivan Basso here, Grand Tour winners, stage winners, you know, the, the, the category of rider here is second to none. It's, you know, without a doubt, the best field that's ever been assembled. Um, yep, Sammy Sanchez, previous Olympic champion, tour stage winner, Basso, another Grand Tour winner. You know, there's lots and lots of riders who are going to be in the mix. But uh, no, it's, it's quite, we're quite proud to actually have the, that kind of calibre on our roads. How will they handle the vagaries of the British summer? Well, you know, they're all professionals. I mean, obviously Basso has won the Giro d'Italia and has raced with the sleet and snow up, up the, the Gabbia Pass and stuff like that. So, But I think, you know, it's a mixed bag, isn't it? It's a lovely day today, but apparently in Scotland it's going to be awful. So I think they're going to have to get used to having their gilet and cape in the back pockets. Well, listen, we can control the route, we can't control the weather. Let's take a look at the roads around Britain. Dubbed the hardest ever Tour of Britain, here's the detail on the tough bits that lie ahead for the riders over the next eight days. It's an East Anglian Grand Depart from Ipswich to the Norfolk showground on the outskirts of Norwich. Stage two begins in Nottingham, crossing the Peak District and then a sprint to the line on Merseyside, into the Scottish borders for stage three and the ups and downs of Dumfries and Galloway before a short hop to Carlisle and the race to Blackpool. Over 2,000 metres of climbing awaits on stage five, starting and ending in Stoke-on-Trent before the mountains of Mid Wales rear into view on stage six. Devon will host the penultimate stage, Barnstable on the county's north coast to Dartmouth in the south. And the final leg in Surrey will see riders head from Rygate through the finish line in Guildford and out into the Surrey Hills. The opening stage of the 2012 race looks to be one for the sprinters, travelling just over 200 kilometres across the flatlands of Britain's eastern counties of Suffolk and Norfolk. Starting on the waterfront at Ipswich before racing up to Great Yarmouth along stretches of exposed coast before a sharp turn inland and the finish line at the Norfolk showground on the outskirts of Norwich. The Tour's opening stage of 2012 should again be one for the sprinters with a largely flat profile on its 200 kilometre route through the beautiful Suffolk and Norfolk countryside. Starting in Ipswich, the peloton races northeast towards the coast, skirting Southwold and bisecting the seaside resorts of Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth before dropping inland through the beautiful Norfolk Broads. Popular tourist destinations such as Horning, Hoverton and Wroxham will sample the colour of the tour as the riders begin to focus on the finish at the Royal Norfolk Showground in Norwich. <laughs>